But over to the star for today, David Morgan, <coughs> talking uh, about fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, as a lot of you will be aware, David has worked as a criminal and family trial lawyer for 20 years in Canada. Since 2001, he's written over 20 papers and presentations on fetal alcohol syndrome and the law and spoken at over 50 professional training sessions here, Canada, the US and Australia. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, we need a couple of quick things. Um, I'm a Canadian and I'm a visitor here, so I, I may miss some things that's very obvious to all of you. Don't hesitate to correct me, because I, I have very strong opinions, and, and I'm often wrong. So if I, you know, stick both feet in it, just put your hand up and say that's wrong. I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm also a trial lawyer. Um, and I have a, a rude, brash, obnoxious Canadian exterior, but deep down inside, I'm just like you. <laughs> so um, I, I have a lot of material to go through. And it's my assumption here that you're all very bright. And all of the stuff, with the exception of very few things, is all written down for you. Okay? We're having some photocopying issues, and you haven't got it all yet. But before we start, does everybody have this piece of paper that says, two-sided lawyer's brief. We passed some out. If, if we've all got that, that's 99% of the way there. And I handed some out to somebody back there. Okay, does everybody got, who doesn't have one, put your hand up and somebody will help you out. Joel, are there any, any of them left? There should be some there. Just get your hand up. Now, at the end of the day, I only want to tell you three things. And actually, if I was pushed to shove, just one thing. And the three things are, what is fetal alcohol? I'm going to talk about interventions. And I want you to learn this. Focus on the brain. Don't get hung up on the behaviors. Okay? Because that's what we do, and that's where we make a lot of our mistakes, especially in my business. Judges and lawyers and cops are very concerned with behavior, and we have some real issues because we're not, it's not working. So that, that's the three things I want to do. And eventually, um, Joel has made copies of this. And I understand it's coming, Joel? Yes, it's about 20 years from now. Okay, so you will eventually get this. and we'll, It's a 10-page thing, and we'll go through that. So um, that's where the plan is. Now, there is a rule, and the rule is interrupt. Ask questions. If I've confused you, or some, just ask a question, I'll go over it. It'll all tie together eventually. So what I want to do is I want to start off, put your pens down. You know, if I had time, I'd take a deep breath and get to know you. But I understand there's mostly health service providers, related government people in this audience. Any lawyers? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Any judges? Cops? Municipal council politicians? Educators? Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Queensland health types, I guess, is a big block of who's here. Okay. Uh, children, special children's outfits, taking care of children, safe children, children's investigations unit. Nurses, any nurses here? One, my mom was a nurse. Um, anybody else here that I haven't sort of mentioned? I know there's some people uh, from the Aboriginal community. Anybody else here? What are you here? From? Okay, so from community health, okay, okay. I, I was quite lucky. I went to visit a friend of mine over Christmas. I was only supposed to be there two days. I spent 17 days in Gove. Does anybody know where Gove, Nullumboy is? Nullumboy. Cyclone, the whole nine yards out in the bush. I went to the Miwatch Health Service, and there's a fellow running it uh, called Eddie Mulholland. I don't know if you know the fellow, but he's a pretty sharp guy. And I'm talking to him about three minutes. He stops. He says, up. Can you come back tomorrow and do two hours for my staff? I said, yeah, good, don't move. Went out, arranged it, came back, and we had a nice, very pleasant chat. Um, took him about two minutes to realize it's something he needed to know. I've had the same reaction from police officers in Tasmania, uh, in Darwin, the Law Society put on something, and 60 lawyers showed up, of three of which were criminal lawyers. <coughs> and that was on 24 hours' notice. So it seems to me there's a real urgency here. And I think that I, I, a couple things I've got to say right away. Um, I have a lot of things to say about Canada. Do not think we're perfect. Okay? Every horrible thing that's been done, we did it too. 
Okay, it's real blunt about that. Oh yeah, we've done some really horrible things. Um, and it's a f uh, The other thing is, and here's the good news. Australia is the world leader who are the gold standard in HIV AIDS education. End of story. I live next door to a country where government employers are not allowed to use the word condoms. So AIDS education in the States is very underground. It's not very coordinated. And in Canada, it's a little bit better, but not much better. You have a wonderful AIDS program. You're 25 years behind us on fetal alcohol. And I see a real easy way to catch up. Everybody knows that the non-smoking campaigns and the drink driver campaigns are a dead loss. But there's something you guys are doing, you people are doing, with HIV AIDS that's working. And I suggest it's a real big help. You've got a model that works. And we can fix it. So now, that's my blurb. Put your hands together like this. Try to think of a baby's brain about as big as a pen dot. Day 15, day 25. Okay? Most people. How many women here knew they were pregnant by day 25? Any hands? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Okay, 15, okay. Day 40? Everybody, how many people by day 40? Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking most people by, you know, okay? So, um, day 40 is, I'm not even there yet. I'm talking day 15. Day 17, day 24, okay? It's a disc. The brain is a disc the size of a pen dot. Get this, get this. It's a disc. Everybody in this room, brains develops like this. Put your hands together. Come on, you've got to, I'm going to embarrass you to remember this. Your brain goes like this. You're watching? It goes like this. Frontal lobes, hemispheres. You got that? Do it again. It's a disc, right? You got that? It's a visual. Remember this. Now, here's what happens. That's your brain, my brain. In fetal alcohol, put your hands together, ma'am. You're cheating. <laughs> now, you have a beautiful chin. You have a beautiful chin. I want you to take your chin and do this. Come on, come on. Embarrass yourself. Okay? What you've done is, that's the alcohol and you've killed the cells on the periphery. You got that? So it's day 24 and you've killed some cells. Now let's go through brain development. What have you killed? Basic deep core structures of the brain. You got that? Basic deep core structures. Everybody here knows the corpus callosum? Little hot chili pepper? Wrong size, wrong place. All kinds of stuff happens. Here's the other way to look at it. Everybody in this room, put your fingers together like this, has a brain like a sandstone pyramid, 99 floors. At the top, one cell. At the bottom floor, a trillion cells. Here's what happens. And I call them kids. That's just my bad habit. These kids don't have a stone pyramid. It's a stone pyramid with skylights. Missing brain cells, missing brain functions. The second thing alcohol does is cells migrate. So that cell on floor 12 that's supposed to hook up to the cell on floor 17, it hooks up to a cell on floor 22. What does that tell you? Cognitive function is... Now, are we with me? So think about it. If you ever got to explain it to somebody, usually your, your immediate superior, who's dumber than a sack full of hammer handles, try this, remember this. It's missing brain cells. What does that make it? It's a permanent physical disability. Are we agreed? Alcohol is a solvent. You know all that stuff. Nail polish. We've got that? Okay. Get that. If nothing else, get the idea that it's a permanent physical disability. Here are some obvious implications. At the expiry date of his probation order, he's not going to have new brain cells. At the end of his time in jail, he's not going to have new brain cells. Give him all the Ritalin you want. He's not going to have new brain cells. Who's the, there's a psychologist here. Okay. Oh, great. Two. Any more? Three, four, five, six. All of the cognitive psychology you can give somebody, it's not going to bring back brain cells. I'm not saying there's not values to going to jail. I'm not saying there's not values to psychologists. But get this. You're not going to bring back the brain cells. What that means is very profound. They're not going to change. First time they come into your office, last time they're going to be in your office, they're going to be the same. And so we're going to have to talk about interventions. You got that? Okay, now, that's number one. 